So this is my vertical Kanban. It's an organizational system that I use in some of my folders in Apple Notes to make sure that my notes, my tasks, have their statuses attached to them, like in a normal Kanban. Let me show you how this works. So, quick step back, what is a Kanban board? Well, it's a very simple organizational system when you think about it, where you put your tasks into a big board in columns. So you've got one column for the tasks you still have to complete, one column for the tasks you are working on, and one column for a task you've completed. Now, it can get more complicated than this, but you get the idea. So you move your tasks across from one column to the other when their status changes. This type of organization is not possible in Apple Notes. There are other apps that can do this very well, actually. Apps like Notion, ClickUp, even Reminders can give you this ability to structure your uh, tasks in columns. However, I didn't want to have two different systems because that is a problem. If you use Apple Notes to keep track of your ideas and you use another app to keep track of the statuses, then you always need to synchronize the two, which for me, is not something that I wanted to do. So I've devised this system in which I'm using icons to make sure that all my tasks and all my ideas, for example, the ones behind this channel, can be structured and aligned and listed in a way that makes sense to me. Okay, so these are the six steps through which every one of my videos go through. They start as an idea, then they move to this second stage, which I call TTH, which stands for title, thumbnail, and hook, which are Ideally, the first things that I try to define when I have an idea and once I'm satisfied that I've got a good title, a good hook and uh, maybe a good thumbnail, I move them to the following step, which is the filming phase. When the filming is done, I then move to editing. When the editing is done, I move to the ready stage. And when they are finally published, like this video right now, they move to the live stage. So I've actually done lots of experimentation to see how those symbols would sort alphabetically, because that's the trick behind this thing. Um, when I list my notes alphabetically by going to view, sort by, title, ascending, all those squares will be listed alphabetically, which means that all the ideas will be first, and then all the blue squares representing TTH will be second, and then the filming ones in orange, and then the yellow ones for editing, the green for ready, and then the purple ones for live. I've actually experimented with lots of icons, as you can see here. I've sorted everything alphabetically, and you will see that there are quite a few strange behaviors, such as this one, for example. The black square comes before the white square, and then there is a, a list of symbols which are completely disconnected to the squares. And then if you go down a bit more, then the squares reappear. So you can choose the symbols that you want. I prefer squares in this case, but you can go with circles, which are sorted this way, uh, or maybe you can use hearts, which sort this way. I mean, you can choose the ones that you want. I went for um, uh, squares, and I've got every single note in this folder that starts with a square. This way, they stay organized. And when an idea moves from one stage to the other, the thing that I do is that I go into one of them, and actually, let's try and follow the path of one of those ideas. If I have a new idea, I just create a new note here. And I'm going to start the idea with the title preceded by the white square, which represents an idea. Um, I'm going to do this to create a, a white square. And as you've probably noticed, I'm using text replacement. I've got a key combination that prints a white square, which I've set in my keyboard settings to speed up the process. This way, I don't have to open the emoji picker, I can just type something. And that works for all the stages, I've created six of them, like this one, for example, it's the editing square and so on. So, this one is an idea. Let's say I'm going to call it this way. Now, I'm going to pick up my uh, video idea template, which looks like this. And I'm going to paste it here. Now, this contains everything that I need to set up for my video. So usually I start by explaining what this video would be about, just the synopsis of the video, just one line. Um, I've created here a, a little thing that helps me find some good titles. On YouTube, titles are uh, best kept below 50 characters. So this one here in monostyle text, 
this is the limit. This is 55 characters, actually, after which everything becomes red. And when I uh, type a new title, I write it here, so I've got a reference point. You know, I, I try to make sure that I stop here or before. Then I've got some space with my hooks and then for my script. Now, this is really easy. I'm not going to fill this in, but I'm gonna, I want to show you this thing. I've also attached a series of tags to uh, these nodes so that they are easier to find later on. I'm going to show you what I mean. But I've created six very similar tags, like they all start with YT for YouTube, live, filming, TTH, editing, idea, and ready, which basically replicates the same statuses that I have on um, using those squares. So let's say I'm happy with this idea and I want to move it to the next stage, which is a TTH stage, um, during which I'm going to try and define a title, a thumbnail, and maybe a hook for this video. In a normal Kanban board, I would drag the card to the next section. In this case, I simply highlight the white uh, square and I'm going to replace it with a blue square. And this, as you can see, has already moved to the next section which is the blue section. And by the way, this, this is a little separator which I've created by simply creating a new node and giving it a name which starts with a blue square, then a space, and then this symbol. This way, when the list is sorted alphabetically, this one stays at the top. And uh, I can continue when I'm happy with my uh, TTH and I want to move to the next stage. I simply select this one and move it across to, um, to the next stage, which is the filming stage, and so on. I keep going until I reach the live status. This way, I've got full control over the stage of my, of my ideas. Now, the last thing to mention is tags. You've probably seen that my uh, card starts with the title and then also contain a tag. The tag is basically a replica of the status of the card, but they serve a different purpose. And by the way, they're not necessary for this vertical Kanban because the square that you put at the beginning of the note is enough to have them listed in the right way. However, I'm using tags because by using tags, I can then have smart folders pull the relevant notes for me. For example, I've created a smart folder here called TTH. And if we look at the rules for the smart folder, as you can see, it's going to pull all the notes that are tagged with this particular tag. So if I were to maybe move, let's say this note goes back to the TTH stage. So I'm going to do QE2 and change it. Now it's back in the TTH section. And if I attach a tag which I've created called YouTube TTH, now this card not only is listed in the right way alphabetically in the vertical Kanban, but I can also pull this tag by clicking on this smart folder, which is going to give me every node that has that tag. In this case, my video idea is here. You may have noticed, by the way, that I'm using also a second icon on each one of these nodes. And this represents the content pillar these video ideas fall into. So I've got, for example, uh, videos that relate to Apple Notes that have the yellow heart. Videos that relate to productivity have this person on a computer and so on. It's just a way for me to further break down my tasks, my video ideas, into categories. Of course, you don't have to replicate this thing. And by the way, you don't have to replicate anything. The, the overall idea behind these videos is just to show you what is possible, to give you some ideas that you can then pick and choose and implement into your own workflows if they fit. And this thing, like everything else Apple Notes, will sync across your devices and it works extremely well on uh, iPhones. I particularly like the black background actually, which I think makes the icons really stand out. Anyway, this is it for today. Thanks a lot for watching and see you soon.